This video is going to teach you about fractions. We're going to look at adding and subtracting fractions, then multiplying fractions, dividing fractions, and then adding and subtracting mixed numbers. Uh, mixed numbers being when you have a whole number and a fraction placed together. So looking at adding and subtracting fractions first, um, hopefully you're quite familiar with these types of questions. When you're adding and subtracting fractions, the main thing you need to remember is that this number, which we call the denominator, the top number being the numerator, uh, they must be the same before you can add. So these two are the same, so we can just add the one and the three, and we, so we end up with uh, four over five. That's your simplest type of question. Looking at question two, you can see that the two denominators are different. So you're looking for the uh, lowest common multiple of three and four. So that's the first number that's in the three times table and in the four times table. Now you can either do this by thinking about the times table, so 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 4, 8, 12, and then you, can, and then you find it. Or you can cross multiply, so you could say, okay, what's 3 times 4? 3 times 4 is, is 12. So if you're going to multiply this denominator um, to get it to 12, you'd have to multiply it by a value of 4. Now you can't just multiply the bottom of the fraction by 4 because that's going to change um, what the value of the fraction. So you must multiply the top of the fraction by 4 as well. The reason that doesn't change the value of the fraction is because if you're multiplying by 4 over 4, hopefully you know that 4 over 4 cancels down to 1 over 1, which is just 1. And you know that if you multiply anything by 1, it remains the same. So, the left-hand fraction becomes 4 over 12. To get the 4 to uh, 12, we need to multiply by 3. So, we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by 3, uh, which gives us 9 over 12. And that gives us an answer of 13 over 12. This is a top-heavy fraction. If you needed to convert it to a mixed number, you can see that you've got one more twelfth than you need. So that would be one unit and one over 12. Uh, looking over here, it's exactly the same when you take away fractions. You need these two numbers to be the same value. So I'm going to multiply them together and I'm going to get 2 times 7 is 14. To get this 2 to 14, I need to multiply by 7. To get this 7 to 14, I need to multiply by 2. And that's the top and bottom of the fraction like before. Now we can just do 7 take away 2, which is 5 over 14. The next thing we're looking at is multiplying fractions. This is probably the simplest type of question because when you multiply fractions, you literally multiply the numerators together and then you multiply the denominators together. So 1 times 3 and 5 times 5. So that's going to give us 3 over 25. Now, because 3 isn't a factor of 25, and because 3 is a prime number, uh, we can't uh, cancel this down at all. Looking at the next one, we've got 1 times 3, and 3 times 4. So that's 3 over 12. 3 is a factor of 12, so that means 12 divided by 3 is 4, so that cancels down to 1 quarter. The next section that we're looking at is dividing fractions. So we're looking at dividing 3 quarters by 1 eighth. Now, when you're dividing a fraction by a fraction, there's, um, it's a longer process and there's more steps to it. And there's a way that you can remember it in the exam using uh, an acronym. But I want to show you what you're doing firstly so you understand what it is mathematically that you're dividing. So you should see that we've got three quarters of a circle here. When you divide a this fraction three quarters by another fraction, all you're doing you're doing exactly the same thing as you would if you were dividing a whole number into parts. It's just that you're dividing a fraction of a whole into smaller fractions. So, as you can see, I've split each quarter into eighths. Now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six eighths there. 
Now, it's not always, you don't always have time to do that in the exam, or it might not be feasible for you to draw the fractions that you're given. So the way that we remember how to do it is by using the acronym KFC. Now this stands for keeping the first fraction the same, so three quarters remains the same. Flipping the second fraction, now what I mean by that is taking the reciprocal, so writing down 8 over 1 rather than 1 over 8, and then changing the sign. So we're going to changing the division sign to a multiplication sign. Now we know that multiplying fractions is the easiest thing to do. 3 times 8 is going to give 8, 16, 24. 4 times 1 is 4. And if we cancel that down, we get a solution of 6, which is what we had from our visual representation. The last section is looking at adding and subtracting mixed numbers. Um, when you're adding and subtracting mixed numbers, it, what you're doing is you're taking the whole number here and the fraction, and the whole number here and the fraction as one whole number. So three and a half and one and two thirds. Looking at the first question then, we've got three and one half, what I want to do is write this as a top heavy number. So that means when the numerator is a higher value than the denominator. So within the number three, if you imagine you've got three circles, I have one, two, three, four, five, six halves. So the number three is made up of six halves and then we have another half here as well. So that's seven over two. The number one, we can, that's made up of three thirds, and that means we've got three thirds here and then another two. So that's going to be five over three, and we're taking them away. Now, we know from the earlier section of the video that you can't add or take away unless these uh, denominators are the same. So multiplying two and three together gives me six. So that's what I'm aiming for as my denominator. So to get two to six, I need to multiply by three. So that's multiplying the top and the bottom by 3. So that's 21 over 6. To get 3 to 6, I need to multiply by 2. 5 times by 2 is 10. So that gives me a solution of 11 over 6. If you were asked to write this as a mixed number, you would take out as many 6s as you could. So that would give me 1 and 5 6 because the unit one, again if I quickly split that up, can be made out of one, two, three, four, five, six, six. Okay, I'm just gonna change the pen color so you can see this next one. So we're looking at three and, sorry, five and three fifths and two and one quarter. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna turn them into mixed numbers sorry, top, from mixed numbers to top heavy fractions. So within the number one, there would be five fifths. So in the number five, we would have 25 fifths plus this extra three. So that's 28 fifths. Here, within the number two, we would have eight quarters plus this quarter gives us nine over four. So if I write that out again, we have 28 over five plus nine over four. Again, we want these numbers to be the same, so I'm gonna multiply them together and know that I need a denominator of 20. So we need to multiply the top and the bottom by four, and we need to multiply the top and the bottom by five. So this is the easiest, that's gonna be 45. Uh, 28 times four, I'll do that up here. So that's 8, 16, 32. 4 times 2 is 8, 9, 10, 11. So that's 112. 112 plus 45. Use your column method. Don't do these in your head. It's not worth it. If you make a mistake, you'll lose a mark. So that's 157 over 20. If we want to write that as a mixed number, We've got 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140. So that is 7 and 
and 17 over 20. And that's your question done. These types of questions would normally get you uh, around three marks. So although the actual the, the maths behind them isn't very tricky, as long as you show you're working, you take your time, it's the number of things that you need to remember that they're testing. So do try and revise these and do some practice questions on them.